Hey Raindrops, now before we get into this video, I wanna to talk to you about joining my community. Yes, my YouTube community of subscribers. So make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. It helps build the channel and build our community. I love it when you guys comment and post. So remember, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. All right, perfect. So first of all, welcome Dr. Latoya Thompson <laughs> to our interview. It's so wonderful to get a, a chance to just chit chat. Um, it's no secret that I've been a fan of the show since season one, episode one. I'm also from Michigan. I grew up in Flint. I lived downtown Detroit for many, many years. So I really think the first question I have for you, honestly, Latoya, is a, a it's a Detroit question, right? <laughs> um, because I've seen you flexing in a couple different fly ass furs on the show, right? So are, you, are you like a Dietrich furs girl? Or like, where did you where did you get your coats from, Latoya? So Dietrich is my go to. Yep. Uh -huh. um, because that was you know that's where my mom went. So you grandma can do went. That commercial, that's right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They still got the commercial too. <laughs> um, but there's also some local new local places in actually Birmingham that I go to. So okay, cool, cool. Yeah, cool. but Dietrich is a staple. <laughs> All right. That was the, so that's my first question, because, again, you know, I just the culture where we come okay. from in Michigan, that's a big part of the culture there. So I just wanted to know that. And second of all, Latoya, I love theme parks, roller coasters, amusement parks, all that. Uh -huh. And I'm also like you. I'm an experienced person. I believe in paying for the experience and having a good time. So tell us about what we didn't see on the show this week, which was your Disney trip. Right. What, what kind of splurges did y'all do? How was Disney? So we go, we actually go to Florida every year. Usually we did take a, a big family trip. So okay. that's my immediate family, my parents, my sisters, we all go somewhere. Um, usually it's the Florida. Actually this year we're taking a cruise. Okay. Um, but, you know, Florida is always, is, I mean, part of Florida is our home. Me and Anthony actually lived in Miami for a while. Okay. Uh, and so we, that's our second home. Uh, that's we cool. went to... My oldest turned 13. And so we did, you know, Universal. We did Disney World for Ava. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we do? Oh, we did I, Epcot, which, you know, yes. I don't know about Epcot. And the different, you know, again, they have a lot of um, themes around the world. So I kind of mm -hmm. like that um, mm -hmm. and being able to taste the, the food from different places yeah. and the drinks from different places. So mm -hmm. it was cool. It was good to get away. Um, and then, you know, my, my boys are definitely the real takers. So they want to get on all the roller coasters. So Island of Absolutely. Adventure was their thing. And so yeah. my mom get yeah. on those. Yeah. I like it too, but we did all <laughs> that. It was fun. It was fun. It seems like it. that's, that's a, a child's dream and, and being from Michigan, that mm -hmm. flight there, either you drove or you flew down to Orlando for the trip i just remember that as a child because we went when i was a kid so just yeah. it was a fine memory um that that triggered when i watched the scene of yeah. Pack of <laughs> that was dope um okay so latoya dr latoya thompson right um <laughs> really i believe the first doctor in the franchise thus far right and you work as a doctor of physical therapy so for those of our audience who are not familiar with just exactly what someone with or who is a dpt does mm -hmm. what can you tell us about your work as a dpt dr thompson um so i specialize in sport and orthopedic injuries um i um so a doctoral degree requires an additional four years three three and a half four years depending on the school that you go to um mm -hmm. with clinical work so the reason I was in Florida when we lived in Miami, I was actually finishing my last, um, my last of my clinical rotations. Okay. Um, and we stayed there. Um, I actually love my job. I worked with the university of Miami, uh, football as well as, um, there's a uh, Titleist performance Institute that's down there. So I'm certified in golf, uh, rehab as well. And so it, it's definitely a, a, a profession that you can go anywhere with. Uh, we have a lot of physical therapists that um, have trained, that have also a background in athletic training. And so you'll mm -hmm. see those, a lot of them on the field as well. Um, you have some that go into the uh, psychosocial. So, um, which I think actually in our, in the health profession in general, we leave out a lot of the psychology of pain and the and yes. how it expresses itself, and um, you get you'll see, and especially with sport too, and really recovery from any injury, um, mm -hmm. 
the the mental emotional that component that goes along with that. Um, so it's it's it has been a great ride. I have always wanted to go into sport. I had physical therapy when I was in high school and college um, because I ran track and I I hurt myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was always intrigued by it, and you know I I knew that was what I wanted to do from the from day one. Yeah, and so currently, what capacity are you working in with as a DPT now? So I work with a local um, hospital system okay. uh, where we support uh, some of our teams that are local okay. Detroit, um, teams. So the Detroit Tigers, um, DCFC, which is uh, the Detroit City Football, which is our uh, semi-professional football, I'm sorry, yes. semi-professional soccer team. Yes. Um, and I love that because I get to, with the soccer aspect, it has never been my go-to sport because it's not something mm -hmm. I always used to watch. But my mm -hmm. son, Aiden, is the soccer player and he loves it. I'm like, I got to wow. make sure I understand this. So Anthony still doesn't understand the game. But <laughs> I'm like, he yelling on the sideline. I mean, you about to get us a yellow card because he's not doing anything wrong. But yeah. Um, but no, that that has been fun. Um, uh, so I work in that aspect. But I also work in the hospital as well when we're off season. Um, and so that has been a different aspect because um, I work in the city. So yeah. a lot of patients, a lot of people that see me there have seen me on TV. Yeah, uh, I yeah. have requested to get on my schedule because they found out who, where I was at and where I was working. Wow. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's been a different experience for me, <laughs> for sure. Because I like to lay back in the in the cut. I do my yeah. job, you know, um, and, you know, I, I always get I. I not to you know brag, but I do have like a wait list and things of that nature yeah, yeah. for the show. Um, talk your shit, Dr. Thompson. Different. You talk your shit. You have a wait <laughs> list. Brag. That's an accomplishment. I mean, hey, you know, you can't brag these days. You know, people yeah. get mad. Oh, yeah. they, you know, but hey, but whatever. Yeah, but I do my job. I right do thing. it well. So yes. people come to see and get treated when they, they want the best. And so they come find me. I think that's awesome. And I think that's one of the, the coolest parts about a show like Love and Marriage Detroit, because it showcases the many facets of, of black love and marriage that we see. And I think mm -hmm. it's quite inspiring for the audience and for even, you know, people watch this show with their kids. So like mm -hmm. they're seeing this black woman who pursued this course of study. And just like you just described what you're doing now, it's mm -hmm. such a cool job. You know what I mean? And so I think it's great to kind of get that message out to the audience that that's a possibility. And we need more black PTs. We do. Yes. Or yes. always like, especially even from the show on like other per, uh, black PTs that are in the profession. I'm so glad to see you on yes. TV and representing because you don't know, you don't, I mean, I don't know if I know of any black PTs on TV. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm glad to represent and to make sure that, that, you know, that people see that we are out there and that, you know, we, we can be professional as well as do our job very well. I love that you share that. Um, and I also think it's really cool that with such a, a robust professional plate in front of you, right, mm -hmm. and so much to handle, you've now added being a television personality to your resume. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. It's not a pivot because you're not changing your direction from your work naturally, but you're adding this. So talk to me about what made you decide to participate in Love and Marriage Detroit. Well, Anthony, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it would never have been my first thing to do. Okay. No, not at all. It's just, I watch reality TV. I, I get it. Okay. Um, but I never thought that I would be on it. And now being in it, I see a different side. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony was, and then part of it too, you know, I kind of felt like I owed this to Anthony because of mm -hmm. our history from Atlanta. And mm -hmm. so it's like, he really wanted to do it. They wanted a couple. So, okay, I'm going to try. I'm very uncomfortable. Um, and the mm -hmm. producers knew that too. They, they were like, we know Latoya. We know. <laughs> you know I quit. And then they're like, well, you know, you're doing well, but but I quit. Uh, but, you know, but I come back because I know that, you know, again, he he does enjoy this aspect of it. And I'm going to support mm -hmm. my husband. Uh, mm -hmm. There's, you know, aspects of this that, you know, I don't like there's aspects that I do like. And I think that's with mm -hmm. any any job, any anything that you put yourself in. And I have actually learned a lot from the production standpoint um, of seeing Anthony's view and how he mm -hmm. does his job and what he works in every day. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I respect, um, the people that, you know, that do do this. Um, mm -hmm. and it gave me a greater insight of what Anthony does. I have, I mean, I always knew what he does, but like mm -hmm. to be in it and understand it, I'm like, oh, okay. So that's why you have, he's one of those creatives. So he doesn't, mm -hmm. sleep. he, you know, sleeps in three hour increments and I mm -hmm. never stood it. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. but now I see how other producers work and how they put these things together and, I'm like, okay, this makes sense now. Okay, now mm -hmm. I understand. Not necessarily, you know, and then there's aspects that I don't necessarily still get or, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's part of the growth process of being a part of it. And what a, what a surprising or unexpected gem, right? To kind of find throughout this process, more clarity in understanding, you know, Anthony's POV or his experience mm -hmm. as far as his career is concerned. Because just like you said, it's one thing to to understand it or to know what a person does. Mm -hmm. But when you experience the environment, all the other factors, and you begin to understand it overall, it does kind of change your POV. So that's a good thing. What else have you enjoyed right. about being, because this is a really special thing to me, right? Mm -hmm. Showcasing these Black families on such a large stage, um, having a, a portal into the lives or kind of behind the gates into the, the, the suburban lives or city lives, depending on where the family is rooted. That is a special perspective. So yeah, what are you enjoying about this moment in your life right now, being on television as a part of Love and Marriage Detroit? Um, I think it definitely has grow. It, it grew me up in some areas. Um, mm -hmm. I know for me, and it's, it's something that we, we do talk about a little bit throughout the season um, mm -hmm. This season is about perfectionism and having a view of how you want things to go. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very obvious in production that, you know, it just may go left and it may mm -hmm. not go the way you want it to go. And you had to kind of go with the flow. And I think that mm -hmm. has allowed me to just chill out and just yeah. go, with it. you know, some things again, I may not like, but it has allowed me not to, to be so, I guess, hard on myself. Mm -hmm. um, as well as others. Um, mm -hmm. I do expect a lot from people that are around me. My, I mean, my kids see that my, my husband sees that. And, but I feel in that too, I think we make each other better. Yeah. Um, and there is a way to explain those things to children and to your spouse of uh, what you expect, but then in being able to compromise when it's not, when it doesn't go that way, but being able to bend a little bit too. Um, yeah. So it has allowed me and Anthony to um, really, and I think I, I, everyone in our cast have, has said this, is like our communication has definitely improved on wow. how we communicate. Um, you know, men and women hear things differently. Um, we could be yep. saying the same exact thing, but you just heard it completely different. Um, and that's not what I meant, you know? So I'm, yeah. he says the same thing. I'm like, well, yeah. no, I think... He has gotten better at communicating with me on how mm. I think and me mm. the same way. Um, and that has given us the ability to have more grace with one another as well. So I think that aspect of it has a lot, it has really helped me to grow as an individual, mm -hmm. but also in my ability to communicate with others, mm -hmm. uh, especially in every aspect from entrepreneurship to my profession in uh, physical therapy and talking mm -hmm. with patients. Um, it has allowed me to be a better communicator. I think that's incredible. Did did those benefits kind of contribute to your decision to return for season two, Latoya? No, it still was Anthony. It, it <laughs> no. was Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you know, yeah. I you know, with it, it's so hard because I'm very I'm structured. I need a schedule. Yeah. I need when y'all coming back, so yeah. I can be ready, I can have stuff. And it again, it don't happen that way. It's a different world. <laughs> so, a different it, world. Yeah. So it, again, that makes me uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. again, I've gotten better with it and, you know, it, I had to just grow with it. You don't know what to expect. And I think that's my hardest part is the unknown. I've always dealt with having issues with the unknown. I think most people do because I can't control it. So I'm like, yeah, of that. course. <laughs> Did you, was there anything different in your approach to participating in season two versus your approach in participation of season one? Um, no, I would say that again, me and Anthony always talked, even though, you know, 
you know, they don't want you necessarily, if it's your spouse, you're talking to your spouse. Um, yeah. We didn't really talk about scenes. If it was a scene that he was in and I wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. we may have talked about it later, but not like in detail. Um, right. But I feel like I can only be my authentic self. I can only be me. And this is what you get. And I can't change that. And I think yeah. me accepting that um, helped me with, you know, things that may have not gone my way. Yeah. Uh, or things that I didn't necessarily like, like, you know, there's edits, there's cuts, you know, I ain't like how my hair was there. Nobody, none of the producers didn't tell me my hair was sticking up, <laughs> uh, right. but like, you know, I can't control that. I can't change it. Yeah. So I think me just being like, this is what it is. This is who you got. And you know, however it is portrayed is one thing yeah. and being okay with, I know who I am. And yeah. If that's not necessarily how it's portrayed, then that's not on me. It's not on me. I know who I am. Authenticity, I think, is a an invaluable currency when it comes to the reality TV space, right? Yes. And yes. when you're a part of an ensemble cast, a lot of times people have questions about how authentic some of the relationships are. Mm -hmm. So amongst the cast right now, who would you say you're currently in close relationship with um, outside of the cameras? I mean, honestly, I really talk to Kim and Kobe a mm -hmm. lot. I mean, mm -hmm. once a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I talk to one of them, um, each of them, actually. So I might see, I mean, Kim is usually, she's out. She's in, you know, moves around the city. So yeah. I may see her downtown because I'm mm -hmm. downtown today. Um, and Kobe lives close to me. Um, okay. So I do talk to them frequently. I mean, and I don't okay. think, that's one thing I, and I think I said this first season, the my relationship with Kobe um, was a pleasant surprise, like wow. another little girlfriend that I could have that, you know, we have similar backgrounds mm -hmm. on how we grew up. Um, and so I was happy to have that come into my life. Um, mm -hmm. And there's nothing fake about the relationship. I talk, you know, I check in on her. I, she checks in on me. You know, we see how the kids are doing, how's Russell, you know, we, that's a given once yeah. a day, once a week, you know, and I think that's what friends do. I and agree. I don't think because it's a TV show that I just should be not talking to you when the cameras are down. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that's actually great because it enriches what the viewers see when they watch the show. You can, you can feel the connection there. Yeah. Do you think that, well, you mentioned that you talked to Kim and you talked to Kobe and uh, you didn't mention Christina. So obviously there's a different frequency and communication there. Yeah. Do you want to be in a different type of relationship or a closer relationship with Christina at this point? Or I mean, are at this you... point, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I think okay. that it it never was that. And so okay. I, it's not something that I would have to miss because mm -hmm. we, left. Um, mm -hmm. we never had that close relationship. Um, again, what, if it was a pleasant surprise for it to come about that way, I wouldn't, you know, resist it. You yeah. know, I'm always, I always think that women need to have girlfriends that they can mm -hmm. come back and talk to. And, and so does guys, but like, we should be able to have authentic girlfriends. Yes. Um, and so if that happens, it happens. I, I don't force relationships. Um, and especially at, you know, this age, it's like the people are here, it, they've been here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if new ones come along, then you, you've been put through the fire a little bit, <laughs> we can, yeah. you know, for me to trust you like that. Yeah. Um, so for me and Christina, I don't find it any different, you know, um, than what it was prior to the show even came about. Yeah. I didn't talk to her before, so I wasn't. Yeah, so it's, it's just as is. I, I love yeah. that you left the door open even in what the way you just answered that question for an organic oh, i yeah, think sure. friendship to a, to occur i think the the nature of it being organic seems important to you and i understand that because i'm the same way i think it just friendship connections be them be they you know platonic connections romantic connect all of that just has to be organic in nature for me so i understand sure. that point of view actually mm -hmm. uh we see this season that uh, friend of the show Chelsea is back mm -hmm. and she um, it seems as though she had a, a bit of a bone to pick <laughs> with, with you and, and your husband Anthony what do you remember about the sit down or the incident from season one where things kind of originated with Chelsea's kind of disconnect from the Thompsons 
Um, so, and I don't know how much you can actually like say because part of it is like, uh, you know, production. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, but like, she was mic'd, so we knew it was mm-hmm, mm-hmm. something was going. You know, you don't just if you didn't have a mic, what what you here for? <laughs> what you right. here for? You I don't got it. a mic, you know. So like. I think a lot of it, you know, that people, it was so much chatter about how Anthony responded to her and, you know, that she was, you know, he was being, you know, just disrespectful to a woman. Okay. Granted, some of the things that he said probably could have, he could have said it differently. He could have not. And I, and I don't know if people even realize, like, I grabbed his hand, like Anthony stopped, mm-hmm. you know, I checked him. And even after when, we were in the car. I said, you need to apologize to her. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to, one thing about me and Anthony, we hold each other down. And if you're wrong, you're right, you're right. And sometimes Mm -hmm. we don't see it, but when you do see it, you need to do what's right to make it right. Yeah, for Um, sure. And so, you know, there was some things that she was saying that didn't necessarily make the cut. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you antagonize and you provoke somebody then you don't expect them to respond. Yeah. Now, again, the way you say things are, is one thing. And yes, she is a woman. But I think in our society now, like, oh, you know, everybody wants to get down on the man because he said a certain thing in response to a woman that's being disrespectful, clearly. Mm-hmm. And his wife is sitting right next to him as well. So not only you disrespecting him, but you disrespecting me too. We won. So don't do not yeah. do that. Um, yeah. So I, I think that... Yeah, I I didn't like how it all went down. I didn't like the after effect of it as well, because we still are hearing that, that, you know, Anthony is disrespectful to women. And that's not the man I know at all. My husband treats me like a queen. He worships the, the ground I work, walk on and as I do to him. Um, mm-hmm. And he's never been disrespectful to me, nor any woman in my life, uh, my family, my children, any of them. So um, the things that are said about him, it, it you know, it really bothered me, but it one point like why why is it bothering you when i know i know him like if anybody yeah. i know him um yeah. so that that scene was a lot um and i feel like it just it i guess we needed a little bit of something for here for 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 there to be some controversy and for anthony to say what he needed to say again <laughs> i think he could have said it differently but okay. I also believe that, you know, she said some things that were wrong as well. And I don't think she's ever re- apologized ever. Mm-hmm. So the things that she said and did. Mm-hmm. And so, again, you can bark and do all these disrespectful things, but you expect a man not to respond. I think that's kind of whack, honestly. Well, well, I mean, listen, that is a reasonable takeaway from that experience. <laughs> um were you surprised? Because again, we saw this season that Brandon invited yourself and Colby and Chelsea to come and assist him in upgrading Christina's ring, which her ring, her new ring looked beautiful on the cameras at her birthday party. So good job mm-hmm. to you guys um, in aiding him in that choice. Were you surprised at the jeweler that day by that kind of icy reception that you got from Chelsea? No, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I honestly... I knew it wouldn't, I knew something was going to happen. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, one thing about me, whether it's TV or not, if I have trust issues already, I'm keeping my head on the swivel. Like, Brandon, I appreciate the olive branch. I appreciate that he reached out and he thought that, and I even said this and I don't think it was played, but I said, I appreciate you including me in something so special that mm-hmm. because and Christina don't I don't know Christina like that to know what she would want her taste uh, but mm-hmm. I I know what looks good so yeah. I appreciate that you that you feel that I have taste and that you want yeah. to include me in this special moment um and for that to be you know to be welcomed by uh Chelsea with just like a cold shoulder yeah. Again, I wasn't surprised because I, you know, there was things that, you know, she she wasn't trying to come at me. She was trying to come at my husband. Mm-hmm. And she wants to hurt me because you can't hurt my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why the things in the blogs about my wine and things that she was saying, 
you know, were coming up because people were trying mm. to at me because they can't get to Anthony, which that's mm -hmm. that doesn't work. Yeah. How are things? Give us a quick update on Opulence Wine. And I think you've expanded into, was it Prosecco or Champagne now as well? So yes, uh, the wine is going great. There has been um, a very well response from the show. Uh, and yes, I have moved into the champagne world. I have uh, started making some samples. It's more so on the legality side that's screwing mm -hmm. me up right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because if anybody knows anything about champagne, you can't, you got to get from Champagne, France. And yeah. So, yeah. Um, that has been, and then with, you know, the world and the turmoil right now, it, it has been definitely difficult. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is um, progressing. I am also moving into some, I have accessories right now uh, for wine, okay. um, but we're moving into some of the lifestyle stuff as well. Congratulations, Dr. Yeah. Thompson. And where can everybody support that? Where can they purchase Opulence Wine and the wine accessories as well? Uh, so the wine can be purchased online at opulencewine.com. I'm mm -hmm. available in the majority of the states, about 45 uh, states. Incredible. Um, then in Michigan, you can find them at the Specialty Meyer. Um, yes. Oh, I miss Myers. Wow. You just <laughs> oh, yeah. Good old Meyer. <laughs> Meyer 50 acres. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, so we are out actually moving into um, some of the bigger box stores. I Wonderful. have just completed my uh, women's business certification. So you'll be seeing me in Target and Kroger and all those stores pretty soon as well. Wonderful. 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 And congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, dialing back to uh to the show and to the mm -hmm. cast we saw in that scene at the jeweler that chelsea in the heat of the moment referred to yourself and colby as the two stooges now which while rude right um some people felt like that was not and by people i mean some of the audience mm -hmm. kind of reaction is that it may not have been a big as big of a deal as it was the way it was received um as a person who was called one of the two stooges, <laughs> what was that moment like? Was it offensive for you? What was what was going on in your head in that moment, Dr. Thompson? I mean, of course it was offensive. She yeah. was she even said it. She said, I'm trying to be offensive. Like I'm yeah. not trying. She's she and the one thing, hey, I love about Chelsea, she gonna be real. Yeah, she uh, stood I, in. She can tell you what she's gonna do and what she's yeah. and what she meant by it. Good, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, the audience will say it wasn't a big deal. Now, if she called me a B or the right. N or anything else, like oh, yeah, and then everybody will freak out. But a name is a name, you know, right? So for a person that dealt with while growing up self esteem issues and being called names to having to raise children that are being called names because of mm. their skin color, I don't mm. play with that. Mm -hmm. It's not because something little. It, to you is little, but it may be a big thing mm -hmm. to somebody else. You don't know how that affects me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I mean, I'm good. Again, I'm, I'm very secure in myself, but it took me time to get to that place. Yes. And people don't know that. And there's work behind that. Um, and again, I'm, I, I'm fine, but it was meant to be disrespectful um, and offensive. And, you know, sh she has to respond to that and be able to own and take accountability for it. Um, and so, again, here's that word accountability. I'm all for people moving forward as long as you can be accountable for the actions that you have taken against a person, if it, especially yeah. if it was something that was not favorable. For sure. Um, did you and Kobe speak that night after you had left the jeweler or did you guys just talk about it in scene the next time? No, we just talked in, about it in scene because I okay. think I don't even know she was. Kobe, so we had a thing. I said, Kobe, especially with her being pregnant, yeah, which I, and yeah. like, again, we, it, we talked about the, in the last episode about, you know, how, you know, unborn babies feel everything that yeah. you, you are going Experience. through. Experience, yeah. You know, so again, for these people to say, oh, it wasn't a big deal, but you have a pregnant woman that you're yelling at, calling her out of her name. You don't know how that's affecting her and her unborn child. So I thought it was yeah. very disrespectful. Um, and so I went, I mean, I did call her after to make sure she was like good, like yeah. she talked with Russell and all that. But like, I didn't think it was cool. I didn't think it was yeah. cool at all. Um, and, you know, Kobe was... Our thing was, if you not good, you leave. Like, yeah, we had that agreement. I think she had that agreement with Russell. Every like, Kobe, go. I want yeah. you to worry about you know being in this. You know, it's not worth it. 
Who cares? Don't have the additional stress, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I love is a person who's watched reality TV from since the real world, the original real <laughs> world, right? Old yeah. school. Old school. Um, <laughs> we love resolution and we love seeing problem solving. We love seeing, I think originally back in the day, people were surprised to see videotaped or documented confrontations and arguments because that was just some random stuff that you saw when it happened in real life so it was sensational to see it on camera and i think it developed an appetite for controversy and drama on these reality shows but really we don't watch the shows for all that we watch them for resolution to see how you guys make it through these issues and find some sort of solution we saw chelsea apologize at christina's birthday party mm -hmm in her way right we saw her okay. issue an apology yes um did you feel that her apology at the birthday's party was sincere or authentic i do i mm -hmm. do um i i was very clear like you know for me to come because i wasn't going you know for me to come you know i I'm not having any type of conversation with you, one, until you apologize. Two, this is not about me. And that and that was one thing that I think Brandon and Chelsea had said in some of their confessionals is that she's trying to make it about her. I'm I, I'm obviously not because right. I want to remove myself from the situation because I don't want any controversy at Christina's birthday, especially right. Brandon trying to make amends and do something special over his wife. Yes, so, yes. I was a little taken back by that. And so now looking back on it, it's like, okay, well, maybe y'all wasn't. But um I, in that moment, I did think she was sincere. Um, because we weren't we weren't doing that. You weren't about to talk to Anthony about nothing. That wasn't happening. And we gonna we gonna leave it and squash it where it's at. Mm -hmm. This night. Per what we saw on the screen, it appeared as far as the timeline is concerned that mm -hmm. you had the kind of the moment where Chelsea issued her apology first and mm -hmm. then the conversation took place at the table where Colby kind of expressed her concerns. Mm -hmm. Did that exchange between Chelsea and Colby kind of impact your POV on Chelsea at all? Or how did you feel about seeing the exchange between Chelsea and Colby at the table that night? I just didn't understand why she couldn't do the same thing with Colby. Okay. Like, I was very clear and and Kobe didn't say like I, and maybe Kobe didn't want an apology she didn't care um but I was clear like I'm not having a conversation but for her to go back and forth with her again is like for what Kobe has not well to be honest me or Kobe has done nothing to you Chelsea nothing mm -hmm. and maybe again she's being protective for Christina but we have all made some resolution with Christina so why you still got a chip on your shoulder Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I didn't really understand what that was all about because again, Chelsea, you ain't doing anything. But the thing is too, Christina, you ain't saying anything to your friend. Mm -hmm. And that's where I struggle with is that, you know, when your friend is wrong, you don't hold them to the fire, but let me do one thing that's wrong. I'm mm -hmm. you taking me to you taking it to me or mm -hmm. even to Kobe. So I, I struggle with, again, accountability. Hold mm -hmm. your friends accountable. And that line moving. Wrong. Yeah. Yes. Um, so just for clarity, what exactly do you think made you decide to say, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the party to celebrate Christina. Like, did you just want to kind of be there to celebrate that moment and, and support Brandon and his his moment, gifting Christina with her beautiful new ring? Or what made you decide, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go? Honestly, to be honest, it had nothing to do with Brandon, Christina, nothing. Honestly, it was making sure my husband was good because yeah. I knew Chelsea was going to be there. And, yeah. you know, again, I'm protective. Yeah. Um, not about to have another conversation with my husband where, you know, you're going to pop off and Anthony going to respond. We ain't doing that. So I felt like I needed to be there to make sure. Yeah. I want to hear nothing later. I, nah, let me make sure. I'm happy for Brandon, Christina. I'm glad y'all moving forward. I'm here to support you, but I'm also here to watch my man and make sure you good and she ain't doing nothing crazy. What do you think, Dr. Thompson, it'll take at this point for you and Christina to kind of build some sort of road to a connection? What do you think the missing piece is at this point that could kind of be the catalyst, not to solve everything, but just to kind of push things in that direction for you and Christina? Um, For me, I, I don't 
and we've said this, like I've never had an issue. We had didn't have a major problem, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very observant. I see how people move and I made decisions based on that, whether that is just to sit, to lay back or to pursue. I don't like to get myself into stuff that I have questions on how you're going to treat me. Um, I don't, I can't risk friend hurt or breakups. Mm -hmm. Um, because mm -hmm. I've been through that and I and I think you know people have said this. There's memes that you know friend breakups can be worse than like boyfriend breakups. Like Absolutely. I've been through that hurt and like I don't want to ever go through that again. Like it it struck me to the core. And I mm -hmm. saw that in in Kobe's eyes at the skating ring. And mm -hmm. when I saw that in Kobe's eyes, I said it wasn't me taking her side, it was me relating to I know that. I that know moment. that moment. Yeah. And I'm like, and I don't know, I know she's had some issues and trust issues with friends and whatnot like that, but like, I don't know anything in depth, but like, I know what that feels like. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want you to have to feel that, you know, I can't take it from you, but I could, I can sympathize with her because I know what that, what that was. And so for us to move forward, I think Christina just has to be real um, mm -hmm. And to say that in the sense of, I think Christina some, sometimes play to whatever is on 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 the tape, what the viewers see. That's what she going she gonna move towards and move with what the people are saying. And I I don't really do that. Like we, I mean, we have moved forward. We we were good after reunion, yeah. and then. You know, you all online on these lives saying some stuff out your mind, like some of these comments. Like, I'm like, where is all this coming from? I don't be on social media like that. I don't mm -hmm. comment. I don't post. I'm not going live. So for me to be saying anything about you, I don't know. I'm not, you know, but you're saying a whole lot. Um, and I don't I don't like that. So yeah. for me, it's not really moving forward. It is what it is. We here. Yeah. I, I can be cordial. I have I don't have anything against her. But right. just just be real. Like some of the stuff you are saying, I please, especially in the comments, please stop. Stop. Because you know the real. And she does. And I, I don't I don't like that fake stuff. I don't like it. How did you feel about the comments that Christina made about um her relationship, her experiences with Kimberly? at the birthday party in Kimberly's absence. What did you feel about those comments that were made? Um, for one, she was saying she was crying. I'm like, she didn't cry at when we had our, our lunch, our brunch. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Kim took a step back and just was like, you know, she felt emotional, but she was not crying. And she was saying that her tears were manipulative. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? She didn't cry. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe... She was emotional because, again, this is that friend hurt that I was talking about. You hurt Kim to the core, and maybe she hurt you too. And I know that they hurt each other, you know. Um, and they she valued the relationship, and to see something different and for it to go south, I'm like, ooh, you know. But I just thought it was interesting that she spent her time talking about Christina. I mean, sorry, talking about Kim at her birthday party. That was this big to do. For Brandon, like even mm -hmm. Brand, I was like, Brandon, why are you not cutting in? Like, hey, let's not, this ain't about Kim. This is mm -hmm. about you. This All the focus is on you. And he's getting back in the house. But she's sitting here talking about Kim. I thought it was weird, honestly. It was weird. Like, why? But you don't care about her. So that just shows me more that y'all still really do love each other. They love each yeah. other. They yeah. do. And they've said that. But, you know, you know, she... I, I, I I thought it was really weird. So there's a the the burning question that a lot of a lot of the viewers have, right? Is we were introduced to the Dobines through Kimberly and Marcel Dobine, her husband, their beautiful children. We were introduced to their family through the Thompsons. You all had them come over to your home, and we saw you guys engaging in a conversation where um, you discuss kind of some of the history of friendship between Kimberly and Christina. A lot of fans and watchers of the show, viewers of the show, feel like there was some sort of conversation that took place prior to that. Over time, as friends do, you exchange what happened in your day or what's going on and you discuss things and things come up, people come up, situations come up. 
um, Kimberly has gone on record saying that you all had never had a conversation about Christina prior to her joining the show. It's your turn, Dr. Thompson. So have you to clear things up for the viewers of the show and make this linear for people that are watching at any point, had you and Kimberly discussed Christina, her friendship with Christina prior to you suggesting that they participate in the show or what is that? What's the origin story of that part in your words? There, there, there was never a conversation as much as mm -hmm. Christina again plays to the viewers because the viewers are saying it and how it may look, mm -hmm. you know, and Christina knows Kim very well. Mm -hmm. One thing about Kim, if Kim is done with you, she's done. She's mm -hmm. not mentioning you, not talking. She doesn't like nothing. So mm -hmm. my relationship with Kim was built off of my relationship with Kim. She mm -hmm. was or she is good friends with somebody that I'm friends with. Mm -hmm. And our relationship grew from that. It never was about a disdain for Christina or anything. Like she she knew did not tell me anything. So when she was like, you know, oh, I, I don't know about them. You know, we, we, I'm good. As far as what it was about, I don't know. Like you can be good on people all the time. I can say that right now. Like I'm good on Christina. Like, but as far as going into detail about what went on or what happened, Kim has never done that because she, that's not her personality. It's mm -hmm. not. Um, and I think it's just so funny how people are like, oh, you brought, you brought Kim for Christina because you don't like Christina. Come on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What made you want to suggest that the, the Dobines participate in the show this season? There were several people that were, uh, recommended for the show. Mm -hmm. It is a whole production. Okay. So she didn't just show up like, Hey, oh yeah, y'all can come to this dinner. Yes, we did suggest a dinner, but it was, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm just going to bring her. No. Did you, you know, know that Kimberly was going to come into uh, District 78, kind of guns blazing, ready to to, <laughs> to address, to kind of, what do they say, dot the I's and cross the T's? Did you know she was about to do it's that? A, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, for me, I've always known Kim, Kim is, she talked and she going to. Yeah. She going to laugh, she going to kiki, and she going to, I don't, I haven't seen that That's aspect right. of, of Kim. And yeah. Kim is a big traitor now, and yep. she going to read you and tell you your rights, okay? <laughs> um, as she, she did, and she will continue if you try to say things that's contrary to what is the truth. Kim yeah. will have receipts, and she will remember a date for forever. She know the date. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay. So again, with a focus to a resolution, right. And, and, and solutions, what do you think from your POV as someone who is friends with Kim and who has a connection to Christina through this friend group, mm -hmm. what do you see as a path to kind of peace for the two of them, for Kimberly and Christina? What do you think that missing link is? Um, I think they're both can be cordial. I yeah. think they can be in the same rooms. They, we all, we all interact with some of the same circles. Um, I don't think that they will ever be like friends again. I yeah. just, I don't, I don't think that because again, that trust has been broken. And one thing that I know about Kim, I can't say for Christina because I don't know Christina like that is that Kim is very, very big on trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if you violate that, you know, it, it, I don't know. I don't know if she's made any resolution with anybody that has violated that trust that she has for, for them. Um, not to say it can't be done, you know, God can do anything. Um, but I just don't yeah. see that them going to a point where they are, you know, friends and going out and talking on the phone and stuff of that nature. I, I don't see that. All right. Well, hopefully they can find the bridge to, to, to connect to each other in some way, Dr. Thompson. And before yeah. you get out of here, I just have one question um, yeah. that you probably have to answer as vaguely as possible. Right. But we never ask anybody <laughs> that. So what the hell I'm going to ask it. Right. <laughs> okay. Reunion is coming up. A big part of the reunion is the look last year. You and Anthony did your thing in all black. Mm -hmm. What cup? Now, what does your dress look like? Do you know what color you're wearing to the reunion this season? Uh, it will be vibrant. We vibrant. all will be vibrant. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I would say that, yeah, you're going to see, you'll see color. Okay. Color. Okay. So you can Pops expect some pops of color. Okay. Yes. We did that. I, I'm, a, I'm a black girl. I love black because yes. I'm like, we're going to do black again because that's what I want. I know yep. it looks good, but no, it, we, we, we went out the box a little bit and got some color. <laughs> well, we're excited to see it, Dr. Thompson. Thank you so much no for problem. your time today. It's been great catching Thank up you. with you. Hopefully we do it again before the season is up. And yes. we just wish you all the best, you and your family. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Yeah, bye.